Okay, we're up to verse five. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Leah number five for Shof team. Verse 14. I'm really going to try to keep my videos a little bit more concise, but man, these verses. Whew. Okay. So for those for those nations, talking about the nations that were already in Eretz Israel, right, that we're about to conquer, when you which are you to for those for these nations which you are to possess, heart, what do they do? What are these nations? What are these nations doing? What did they do that was so like bad? What, I'll tell you. The Torah is about to tell you in verse fourteen, and I also told you in previous verses. They hearkened to diviners of auspicious times and soothsayers. But as for you, the Lord your God has not given you these things, these th you the, the things like these. So don't do it. A prophet from among you, from your brothers, like me, Moses. Moses is the one who's saying these verses. The Lord your God will set up for you, and you shall hearken to him. So the prophet has to be from the Jewish people. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't. What can I do? These are the verses of the Torah. The Torah is telling us the prophets have to come from the Hebrew nation, from Jew. They have to be Jewish. We can't have prophets that come from other religions or from other peoples, other nations. It's, it says so in verse 15. Take it up with your local rabbi, but that's what the verse says. Don't you have to have prophets from the people, from us? Now, like, let's say somebody converts to Judaism. Could they become a prophet? I'm guessing they could. According to and there were non-Jewish prophets. I mean, we had Bilam. Bilam was not Jewish. Noah. Noah was a prophet. He wasn't Jewish because it wasn't the Jewish people. There wasn't the Hebrew nation. So he's talking about after the Hebrew nation was established on Mount Sinai, after that period, after Mount Har Sinai, when, the, when God really revealed himself and made us his chosen nation, he took our, our nation, us, out of Egypt. The, that specific nation, which is us Jews today, the Hebrew nation, the Jewish people today, none of us was to have prophets from other nations. Nikuda. Okay, according to, to all that you ask the Lord your God in, in Horeb, see this is Mount Sinai, it's called Horeb here, on that day of the assembly saying, let me not continue to hear the voice of the Lord my God and let them let me no longer see this great fire so I will not die. So what happened? So on Har Sinai, Har Sinai, like, which is called Horeb here, we had this crazy ecstatic experience which we couldn't manage as a people. So we, it's like we paid to shut up, like, we can't take it anymore. So please give us somebody else so that, that somebody else is Moses. So just like Moses was set up because we really couldn't take prophecy on our own. We couldn't, uh, we couldn't handle God speaking to us directly, each individual person. We couldn't manage it for whatever reason. We couldn't deal with it, even though we were on a very high spiritual level at that period of time. We couldn't manage it. So we set up, we said, well, you know what? We really want Moses or Boehner to be our guy. So Moses is saying like, hey, just like I was, just like I was set up to be your, the spokesperson for a show, you have to choose, there has to be somebody else after because he, he doesn't live forever. And the Lord said to me, they have done well in what they have spoken. So God agrees with this. I will set up a prophet for, for them from among their brothers like you. So this is God speaking to Moses. So God's saying, don't worry, I'm going to make a prophet just from the people just like you. And I'll put my words into his mouth, and he'll speak to them that I, all that I will command him. So this prophet is not going to have so much free will when he's going to say to a prophet, so when the prophet, and there were female prophets, by the way, when the prophet or prophetess, when the male or female prophet was in prophecy, in a state of prophecy, they were getting the words that what they came out of their mouth was what God told them to say, even though that they were dreaming. And they were in a state of sleep. They were like not fully conscious. Like Moses was, it said Moses spoke to God face to face. But the other prophets weren't like that. And it'll be that whoever does not hearken to my words and speak in my name, I will exact it of him. So, you know, like there's this book of you, um, uh, yo, um, EO? No, no, not EO. Oi. Yona, the book of Yona. He didn't want to, he didn't want to listen to the prophet. He didn't, God told him to make this prophecy about Nineveh, and he didn't want to do it. And he ran away, and he ended up getting swallowed up by this gigantic fish. So, if you get the words of Hashem, and Hashem comes to you in prophecy, dude, you can't avoid it. But the prophet who intentionally speaks a word in my name, which I did not command him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. Now, if you say to yourself, how will we know the word that the Lord did not speak? That's a really good question. How are we supposed to know? If, this, if the prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, and the, and the thing does not occur, and does not come about, 
then that thing that the, that is not something that God said. That is not the, that that is the thing that the Lord did not speak. The prophet has spoken it wantonly, and you shall be not afraid of him. So I say, let's say I say I didn't or wasn't. I say, you know what? I'm a prophet, and the God told me to. I don't know. Like I'm going to just say something, like whatever it is. And that thing doesn't happen. Then I'm not a prophet. I'm just I'm just saying like I'm not I'm not speaking God's words anymore. I'm just saying what what actually like I really want to say. But see, remember, when a person's in a state of prophecy, whatever comes out of that person's mouth is actually what God wants to come out of that person's mouth. So you little, so it sounds like you lose a lot of your free will if you're a prophet for that period of prophecy. When the Lord your okay, so when the Lord your God cuts off the nations whose land the Lord your God is giving to you, and you shall inherit them and dwell in their cities and in their houses, you shall separate. Three cities for yourself in the midst of your land, which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Prepare the road for yourself and divide into three parts the boundary of your, Lord, of your land, which your Lord your God is giving to you as an inheritance, and it will be for every killer to flee there. So if there's this unintentional murderer, you know, God forbid, you have to have a place for them to go run to. Because accidents happen. People accidentally kill people, you know, especially when cars, you know what I mean? At the time. Even back then, somehow, some, somehow I accidentally killed somebody. God forbid I accidentally did it. I, had, I would have a place that I could go that the, the people who were actually the, the relatives of that person, they wanted to kill me. So I had to like flee from my life. So I had this city of refuge, but I had to stay there until the Cohen Godot died. And this is the case of the killer who flees there so that he may live. Whoever strikes his fellow to death unintentionally with whom he did not hate in this past time and times past. And when a man goes with his fellow to the forest to chop wood and his hand sw swings the ox, the ax to cut down the tree and the ax iron flies off the handle and it reaches his fellow and he dies, he shall live, he shall flee to one of the cities and live. So like the Torah's giving this kind of like really like almost impo improbable thing that actually happens. So I'm out there and I'm, I'm out there in the forest with one of my buddies or one of my coworkers, and I'm like chopping, chopping wood, and the and the axe head flies off the axe handle and like kills this poor guy standing next to me. That was totally an accident. I totally, but like, hey man, that that guy's family, maybe his wife or his brothers or whatever, they're gonna want to kill me. Like, you know, like, why well, you killed my brother? So that's like a natural thing that those people feel. They feel this total anger, like they want to kill me. I accidentally killed this guy's brother. It was totally an accident. I didn't mean to do it, but like, so I have a place to go. The least the avenger of the blood pursue the killer while his heart is hot. See, it's like when you're really angry, like you can like really like you can come around to wanting to kill somebody when you're angry and overtake him because the way is long and he strikes him to death, whereas he is not deserving death for he had not hated in his past times. Therefore, I command you, you shall separate for yourself three cities. So like this whole thing, this whole thing of the three cities is first of all to get this place, you know, this accidental murder, this accidental manslaughter of the guy who did that to a place to flee and also to prevent the person who's angry from chasing me down and killing me so it's, it's really to it's really to like stop the cycle of violence so this whole three cities situation is to stop the cycle of violence that could happen even an accidental death because people get angry and when the Lord your God expands your boundary, as he swore to your forefathers, he shall give you all the land which he spoke to your forefathers. So remember, we're supposed to get all the way to the Euphrates River. So God's going to expand Eretz Israel a little bit, or a lot, depending on who you ask. And it will keep, and if if you will, this is, like, this is all very contingent. This is like a contract here. There's like a lot of if clause. There's a lot of em. There's a lot of like em if you do this. Well, actually, this one starts with key. This one starts with when, if, or it says if here. If you will keep all these commandments to perform it, which I command you this day to love your God, to love the Lord your God, and you walk in his ways all in his ways all the days. You shall add three more cities for yourself in addition to these three. So you get these three cities, and then if you really if you're following on the law, the rules and you love Hashem, then you're gonna get an additional three cities. So that the additional blood will not be shed in the midst of your land, which the Lord your God gives you as an inheritance, which you will deem guilty of having shed his blood. Because remember, we have to have this whole witness protection program called Judges, and we have to have a deem. But if a, ha if a man hates his fellow, lies in wait for him, rises up against him and strikes him mortally, and he flees to one of these cities, the elders of the city shall send for him and take him from there and deliver him to the hand of the avenger of the blood that he may die. Obviously, there have to be witnesses, it's not just like, but so if, so if somebody's lying in wait and they're like plotting to kill me, God forbid, like let's say there's somebody out there who really like, you know, wants to, he hates me, I don't know whether, to, and he wants to kill me and he's like plotting over there and he ends up succeeding, God forbid, and he actually kills me, you know, have a house for Shalom. So uh, then, um, 
then the the, the 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 city elders can take that guy out and they can they can put him to death for, for plotting to kill me. And you should not pity him. You should not pity somebody who's plotting to do. You don't have any mercy on that guy who's plotting to do murder. You shall, but you shall abolish the shedding of blood and the innocence from from Israel, and it will be good for you. This is like all to like stop the cycle of violence. That's the fifth aliyah.